I'm here with uh, Sarah Stork today. Um, she's a sculpture, weld sculpture. Like, how do you classify yourself? It, that's complicated. I, I'd say that it, I'm a welding artist. Uh, by trade, I'm a welder. Right. But then I'm doing art metal. So I consider myself to be a welding artist. Okay. I like that. You're right out of Georgetown, New Braunfels, Georgetown, Texas. That's all that really matters. Yes, uh, Central Texas, Georgetown, north of Austin, about 30 minutes. Yeah. Are you originally from Texas? No. Really? No. I know. This may be like, confusing. Look like I, maybe I am from Texas, but yeah. no, I was born in Southern California. Southern California. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you're one of those. Oh, I, did, <laughs> <laughs> I did grow up in the country. But, okay. So. Wait, how, um, what got you interested into like the sculptural aspect? Well, actually, I never even knew that the welding sculpture even existed. I actually went into the community college to get my degree in code welding because I wanted to build a pipe fence around our property. Okay. And so we can have cows for you know exemptions. Yeah. So I didn't know it existed until I competed in Skills USA. My instructor he asked me to build a sculpture, and I took that off and made those sculptures and one in 2015 and 2016, um, silver and gold at nationals. And then I realized I could work from home, like not having to work for somebody else by just making metal art. That's awesome. That's really cool. I, I'm a huge fan of your work. I, I, I paid attention to the Pelican development that you're doing right now. And it, it just blows me away the, the idea that you can just take the concept that you have and form it in. Me, I kind of have to have like a print or something to go for. Not uh, so. Do you kind of draw things out and then kind of go off a of drawing, or do you just have the vision in your head of like, okay, well, I'm going to use this, or I'm going to use that, or this is what I have. So I feel like building this. Well, the neat thing about like what I do is that I can go on to the internet and find already pictures of what I'm going to build. <laughs> so I'm able to access like different you know, angles and such. And right. then in my mind, planning it out and doing proportions depending on the size. Um, yes, it's, it would be easier if I had a blueprint, but then again, like I make changes as I'm going. I'm just going to throw that blueprint out. Okay. So. That makes sense. Kind of, do you kind of have a certain material in mind or do you kind of, I know, uh, Johnny well Johnny S. Wells, he does the scrap art, so he kind of digs through scrap and kind of gets inspiration from there. Are you strictly scrap, or do you use scrap and then clean material? Like how, what medium do you like to work in? I typically just use clean material, but then when I'm doing my cuts and such, the drops, that I consider to be scrap and I'll use that. I just, I feel so uncomfortable using metal that I don't know the origin where it was That makes used. sense. If there's any kind of like solvents or oils on it, because I'm sensitive to like the smell. Like I'm definitely getting the respirator when I'm out here. <laughs> I have one at home, but it's like the Home Depot. It's like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You so, get the. I know uh, Miller and Lincoln both have like the ones that fit under the welding hood. Oh, yeah, so the low profile. Yeah, ones, yeah, yeah. yeah, those are nice. The important. But no, I, I don't work too much with scrap. Um, but the new metal, I find it's easier. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of go from where you want to and then you know how to weld it you know like your your true base metal as opposed to being like oh this is kind of steel this is cast yeah <laughs> why like, is it melting like oh okay well yeah. wrong stuff so yeah exactly <laughs> kind of go from there cool what um so do you you do you said you do structural welding did you do you do structural welding as well because all i ever really see is you know just the artwork oh stuff. well that's because i only started posting things on uh, Instagram since 2019 okay and it's always been the art part because after 2016 I'm at Wynn and then starting at home in 2018 making sculptures the structural part like that's just my background right and uh, I don't you know sometimes people ask me to do things like furniture or uh, you know weld on the teeth back on the buckets so you know, yeah, 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 the yeah. Gravy and different, you know, tool steels, but the structural, like, I like that I have that background because I feel that I have more integrity in my welds That's true. when it comes to my sculptures, because you just don't want it to fall apart. Like, too often I see sculptures, and they've got, like, just tack welds, 
and they, maybe they just drop it and then stuff just starts breaking okay, off, that, you know. That, that, to me, that would be a bit embarrassing if you made something for somebody and you give it to them and they just start falling apart. And yeah, it's I can outside, see. yeah. Yeah, especially, especially like a larger piece and then some of the detail parts start yeah, deteriorating. So, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm sorry, you know, all sales are final. <laughs> I remember last year you had one of your stingrays in the Lincoln trailer. Oh, it's still there. So it's still there. So, oh, yeah. awesome. I have to make it over there and go see it again. Oh, so. I checked on it. Oh, yeah. Just to see if it had any flash rust on it. It looked perfect, just like the day that I, they received it. So. That's always best. Like Nobody's touching it, which is nice. <laughs> when you revisit your work and it looks exactly the same, you're like, oh, okay, all right, um, I did it right. Really, yeah, I did it right the first time. <laughs> it's always sad when somebody else messes it up or drops it or... You know, okay, heaven forbid. Outside, yeah, and the, it rusts. By the pool. Yeah. <laughs> by the oh, beach. <laughs> it just looks beautiful out there. You're like, oh, you know, no. <laughs> it wasn't made for all that. No, no. This, you know, the mild steel is going to rust, and I just have like um, clear lacquer. Okay. So as my my sealant. I like then, clear poly. <laughs> That's been my go-to for oh, okay. like metal sealants and stuff, especially the spray poly. Okay. Yeah. I tried that. So, because it'll go on and have like a blue tint to it, uh -huh. but when it's dry, it's clear. So you can see where you're layering. Yeah. It. That way you're not going over the same spot. Exactly. Over again. <laughs> I kind of I run into that with clear coat. Like this thick. <laughs> yeah, like one spot's real thick, the other spot's real thin. You're kind of like, ooh, and you I'm see missing. the runs. Yeah. Yeah. I miss the so. spot, and then you're like, why is it resting? Again? <laughs> Did I, I thought I sprayed it. So how's Fabtech been going for you so far? You know, Fabtech is like the adult Disney land for fabricators. Like, yeah. Except there's no rides, but we just have tools to play with, and I think that is like so fun. Like you can walk up to booth like, hey, I want to, I want to run your machine, and then you get to play with it and adjust it, and, um, get to try out the new products. Yeah. Uh, or you know, have questions on products that you already have and, and troubleshoot those issues or get spare parts. Yeah, so, definitely. I've been fun. noticing. <clears throat> a lot of stuff that I thought like hey this would be a cool tool to have or this is a cool idea and then you see it you're like well I can't be the only person that has this idea for it and you see that it already exists you're like oh, okay cool and yeah. then you know get to check it out and that's that's been one of my favorite things so a lot of really interesting people yeah um, of course you know the welding community is always so interesting <laughs> we're, we're very animated yeah and we fun. have our characters <laughs> yeah my time is great you know we have you know fun after fab tech so yeah it's a, it's a family and i love it yeah it's a it's really cool just to kind of you know everything's basically our day-to-day -day life is this internet community and then when you have the physical representation of that with everybody in one spot it's, it's pretty interesting just meeting people you haven't really you know but you don't know yeah so. and then the the high school students i love seeing them coming in here because they've got this you know sparkle in their eyes yes. because they're just fired up about the, the equipment and what they can do with it in their future in welding and fabrication so it's it's nice to see the young you know, the young kids in here and of course they see my work on there like oh my gosh i'm a big fan and i'm like how do you do it and i'm like i don't know <laughs> i don't have a blueprint <laughs> I, I just got to hand, hand out stuff like tell you exactly how to do it but um, you just got to do it it's just really cool just to see the as you know you post your pro your progressive steps oh, like yeah. as you go on mm -hmm. and it's very similar in the weld art well welding sculpture the metal sculpturing stuff um kevin stone yes oh that, my gosh he's I, amazing i can't I figure him. out how he starts and where he gets to where he goes on something he has, a, he has an auto body background <clears throat> and so a lot of like oh. the cold forming and shaping he does with the sheet metal I, that like is his like extreme strong point and then his structural welding on creating the frame to hold those all that weight of that metal he does a great job yeah, yeah. i'm seeing some of that stuff is just amazing yeah, yeah exactly it's like okay Monumental. yeah it, it <laughs> yeah. truly it is so um who let's try to think what have you seen so far that has impressed you here like what other than like is there like one tool like one thing that you're like you got to go check it out. The ham sandwich, no. <laughs> no uh, that sounds one, good about now. but. <laughs> well, Fireball Tool, I didn't see their booth this year. Is there somewhere? I don't think they're here. Yeah. I haven't seen them. At, uh, CK's not here either. Yeah, there's a few um, that are missing. Yeah, there's a few that are missing. I, I like Fireball Tool squares. 
So. Well, definitely, I'm very impressed with the respirators because I'm interested in getting a respirator. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. that's one thing. But the um, safety is important. Yes, and then like here, like Edge, I came by and they have a 23 cup for Fabtech 23, and I was like, ooh. Yeah. It's, so it's, Did know, you get one of the shot glasses? No, they have a shot glass. Yes, here? I'll get oh. you taken care of. Oh Don't my worry gosh. about it. <laughs> Multi-purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Can you still well with it? <laughs> no, no, it's just the, it's a sealed bottom cup. So. Oh, okay. All right. um, what projects do you got that you're working on for the future? What do you got coming up? Oh gosh, I have a. a Anything two... you want to talk about? You don't have. To, you can tease it. You don't have to give it all away. Okay. So. Well, I've, just to say, I've got a two-year wait list. Okay. On sculptures, and right now I'm working on a, a pelican, and he's going to be super cute, which. Um, How, uh, what size is he? The dimensions. Yeah. He's yeah, about almost, almost four foot tall. Okay. So right before coming to Fabtech, I had, I had the head. It's about 15 pounds. And then the feet, you know, big, you know, big, fat, yeah, yeah, yeah. flat pelican feet. And those are also pretty heavy. But having to join them together at a distance, and then you got to worry about this, you know, teetering weight. So I had framed up the body. Of course, well the feet to the table. Right. And then put one bar and like securing the head over there and it's like going like this. I'm like, come on. And then it got stuck. I was like, good. And then I started putting the framing around. And I broke it off the table after I did enough framing that I felt it would be secure enough. And I set it on the ground. You know what? Got it on the first try. It's balanced. It's not tipping over. Or hey, can't way. complain about that. that yeah. I was like, all right, let's go to Fab Tech. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the what's the next one you're gonna be working on? A pig with wings. A pig with wings. Yeah, on one foot, and he's gonna be all smiley, like, you know, happy to fly It's kind of curious, like when pigs fly, right, sort of. Right, he'll, he'll be happy, you know, because he's flying. You know? There was a German bakery in New Braunfels used that that was their logo as like a flying pig, so. Yeah. yeah that's pretty cool. So that, that's one of the, you know, different requests I have. But then I'll be back on uh, octopus, fish mounts, uh, another big bird. Uh, See, that was gonna be my next question, like, do you, so do people just come up to you and request like things that you, they've seen you done and they're like, oh, I want another stingray. Oh, I want another octopus. Or do they, do you get like, what's the, what's the frequency of that incoming versus the new ideas that like, hey, I want you to make a pig with wings or like I have this little thing from a storybook from a, when I was a kid that I would really love to have. I get both. Okay. Where I'm on Stingray number 30. So you can see like that wow. one, like it's pretty popular. It's not as expensive as most of my work because it doesn't take much time for me to you know, put this together. And then you have those that are commissioning me to do something in their mind what they would like. Like the Denver Bron Bronco logo, that was like oh, interesting. Oh, okay, I remember that one. Two dimensional yeah. logo and then trying to make it pop out to make a three dimensional. That was interesting, but still have my own spin on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, they all commission me with their ideas to give me the artistic freedom to design. So that's um, that's good. That's that's to me that's like a, a big relief mm -hmm. when I get a customer. I mean, I do home furnishings, like home remodeling spots mm -hmm. and stuff. And so they have an idea, but when I'm like, uh, can you trust me on this wood choice a little bit more than this, <laughs> just to kind of like, and then. Yeah. 99% of the time it's good to go so but just when you have that little bit of artistic freedom on how to create what you want to do then to, it makes it a little bit more enjoyable oh gosh I always tell that everybody trust the process trust the process. exactly like I'm doing this let yeah. me kind of get my thing in so. yeah I have the vision or some you know they do sometimes a few clients will actually request a concept drawing and you know if I I don't want to spend too much time drawing because I'm not actually going to be giving them a drawing, getting paid to draw like right. so much. So I just give them a, like a general idea of like this is how this is going to be. Oh, okay. Let me know if you're good with that, or if not, we can make changes. And that way, in my mind, I know the blueprints are up here. Yeah. That I'll be able to get what they're envisioning for their right. pro for their piece. So. That's cool. At least you know it's a uh, from brain to physical representation is something you've got down. So that's that's sometimes, pretty cool. Sometimes, 
I mean, that's the great thing you got to cut off the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> There's always the erasing grinding wheel and the torch. <laughs> the really torch. Good, man. But you know, you heard about like when you're upset and you oh, go yeah. to throw something, don't throw it with your dominant hand. Turn around and throw it with your not yeah. dominant hand and see how far it goes. Like, and then you laugh at yourself because you're like, that was Why pathetic. Was I, <laughs> <laughs> I was I mad when I did that weak throw? <laughs> hey, I need to practice with my other hand. <laughs> What's your favorite process to use for welding? Um, I do like to use the MIG because I can move a lot of wire, push a lot of wire into a lot of build-ups and fills. You know, people ask me, well, why don't you just TIG your sculptures together? And I'm like, I just don't find that to be you know, feasible to do because I would have to charge a lot of money for just doing the TIG work, you know, because it takes a while, it's a lot yeah. slower. Well, and I could see where TIG would be a hard time where you're trying to hold a part, and you know, with MIG, you can hold it, Hurry up, tack, tack. get it, tack it real quick, <laughs> but with TIG, you gotta, hey, hey honey, can you come hold this for me real quick so for I can tag this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a... Uh, handy for the small, beautiful details, uh, heat temper colors, and uh, mel melting. Yeah. So if I want to smooth out a section that I really, you know, can't get in there with the grinder, I can get in there with the right uh, TIG cup. Right. So I can smooth out something, and it's it works out great that time. That's a, like your spots on, you use it for your detail work, so your spots on your stingrays, they're uh -huh. TIG? Oh yeah, that's a TIG t uh, temper colors. But the, the settings are really low, and I'm not melting the metal. You're I'm just, just heating it up. Like a flash tack. Right. Just not even tacking. Like, I'm not even, you don't even see a weld pull. Like, oh, okay. You set it, and then about, depending on the thickness of the metal, it's between three seconds to, like, 14 seconds, and then you let off, and then you got that beautiful color that just yeah. pops up. Using, clean metal. Are you using cold rolled steel, or are those stainless? Um, it's, it's all hot rolled and cold rolled steel, but okay. I don't do stainless yet. I am, I will transition to that. I just want a, a fume extractor in my shop because the Oh, for the hexavalent chromium? Yes. Yeah. Got I you. don't want to like die and I'm 50. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting close though, so. Yeah, I hate to say that. <laughs> do you have anything you want to plug while we're, before we go about our days? You want to plug your social media, anything like oh, that? Oh, oh. Social media Instagram is just Sarah underscore Stork underscore, and that's how you can find me. Like all social media, just type in Sarah Stork, and I should pop up. And I don't think I got my have have a hat on that, but uh, you can find <laughs> me there and take a look at my work and let me know what you think. Yeah, cool. Thank Check you, it out. Yeah, I appreciate it. Have a good Fab Tech. You too. This is a weird question. So, what is your idea of the perfect pizza to you? Thin crust, deep dish, like hand toss, stuffed crust, Jeez. toppings. I used to always be a hand toss, but when I came up to Chicago last night, I had the most amazing deep dish pizza. I've never had it where the sauce was on top. Yeah. And I fell in love. I was like, my God, I've been missing out all these years on a deep dish Chicago style pizza. So, yeah, I'm enjoying the pepperoni, mushroom cheese and I guess that's it, yeah. Pepper no vegetables. peppers, no olives, no vegetables, no onions, well, no nothing like that. I like that in my salad. <laughs> oh, okay. I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah. So well, you have all the other vegetables before and then you have then, your yeah, have stick the with the protein. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Pizza. <laughs>